Hi and welcome to the first session of the Building a Transpiler from Scratch class. My name is Dmitry Soshnikov and I'll be teaching this class. And so this is the next course in the design and implementation of programming languages and relates to the high-level translation. So here's the agenda and the first thing we need to say, uh, similar as other classes in the From Scratch series, uh, this course is also very practical. Right again, we'll just have few amount of theory and most of the videos will be actual practical exercises. During the course, we'll implement a programming language uh, very similar to the Erlang programming language. That is a language which has concurrent processes as its basic abstraction, and those processes can send messages to each other. And we're going to compile this language down to JavaScript, right? This is why the high-level translation uh, that is Transpiler. Now, two courses recommended as the optional prerequisite, right? Essential Software Interpretation, also known as Building an Interpreter from Scratch, where we also build a high-level programming language at the AST level, right, with interpretation. And also, if you're interested in specific syntax, uh, you may also take the course building a parser from scratch. Since in this class, we'll be using the very basic syntax known as S expression, uh, which will allow skipping the parsing stage and uh, jump directly to the building the compiler itself. And in the previous classes, we said that we distinguish languages on interpreted and compiled, right? And rather, those are implementations, not the languages. And the AST transformers, also known as transpilers, are a type of compilers. Right, very high-level compilers, right? We don't need to know about uh, machine instructions, memory, etc. Uh, but we need to know the target language. That is, for this specific course, we need to know the JavaScript. And as usually, let's start from the parsing pipeline, right? Let's say we have the simple program, uh, print hello. And the first module, which meets our program, is known as tokenizer, also known as scanner, which groups individual characters into a set of tokens, right? In this case, we have two tokens, identifier with the value print and the string with the value hello. Now, the tokenizer doesn't validate uh, whether our program is syntactically valid. Uh, for this, we have parser. And the parser ensures uh, that the set of tokens go in specific order. And as the result, it produces the next intermediate representation known as the AST, that is abstract syntax tree. Now, once we have the parsed AST, we may directly pass it further to the AST transformer, uh, right? Which very similar to interpreter, just traverses the AST. Uh, but instead of interpretation, that is obtaining result, it produces the next AST. Right, AST dash. And notice that this AST might be uh, of the same language or might be of different language. In our case, the target AST will be of the JavaScript programming language. Once we have the target AST, we pass it to the target code generator, right, which produces the final target code. Uh, in this case, let's say we compiled uh, Ruby code to the JavaScript. Now, notice the uh, high level transpiler assumes that there is some runtime, right, some black box compiler, uh, to which we need to pass our compiled code and its implementation is completely, again, abstracted away. Okay, so this is the prerequisite and the overall uh, approach of the transpiler. Uh, again, pretty simple. Parse, generate the AST, pass the code generator, and obtain the code. Uh, however, in addition to just source code transformation, we'll also have some runtime, right, because we'll need to implement some concurrent system and make functions runs concurrently, which doesn't exist by default in JavaScript. So with this being said, please meet Eva. And in contrast with previous languages, this version of Eva will not be object-oriented, but more of the functional programming language with concurrent processes. Here's the expression overview, a very simple format, right? The first element is the type tag. Here's the addition, so the result will be 15. Here's the variable assignment, operator set. And we also may have some complex expression. In this case, we have if expression. Uh, here's the function declaration, right? As you can see, we use the def keyword from Python. And we're actually going to compile this code to the equivalent JavaScript. So the language is called Eva MPP. And the MPP stands for Message Passing Processes. Uh, we will see what it is shortly. But the first feature of our language is concurrent execution. Right, let's say we have this code, uh, the function handle, which accepts some ID. And then it has two print statements. Right, it prints ID1 and prints ID2. Now, once we transpile this code to JavaScript, it's pretty much a very simple function function handle, console.log, with the same parameters. And we know that function in JavaScript run to completion, right? If we execute function handle with parameter x, uh, we expect to see x1 and x2, right, fully to the completion. Uh, if we execute with the parameter y, we see exactly the same for the y ID. However, in our language, we'll be able to pass this function handle to another function, which is called spawn. And once it's passed, the function is becoming a process which is very similar to threads, right? When in C++ we create a thread from a function, uh, it starts to run concurrently. 
exactly the same when implemented in our language. As you can see, once we execute it handle twice through the spawn, the output is pretty much concurrent. We see x1, y1, x2, y2. So to state it, uh, in object-oriented programming, everything is an object. In the concurrent message passing systems, everything is a process. And a process is an abstraction, isolated code of execution, uh, which also may send messages to other processes. And that's the second feature of our language. Right, in this case, we have three processes, P1, P2, and P3. And process P1 can send a message to the process P2. For this, each process uses mailbox. Right, as you can see, the message is delivered, and the process P2 can somehow handle this message. Right, for example, it may choose to reply to the process P1, and already message goes to the mailbox of the P1. Or it may send a message to another process P3, which in turn can send a message to P1. Now, this is known also as the actor model, right, when objects or concurrent processes can send messages to each other. And this is something we'll also support. Now, in the code, it looks like this. So we have the function, right, handle request, and we see the receive statement, which means this process expects a message. Now, once we create a process using the spawn function, uh, it returns the process ID, or PID for short. And have the PID, that is the process ID, we can send messages using the send command. In this case, we send the record containing two properties, code with the value 200 and the length property with the value 500, uh, which is in compiled JavaScript code is equivalent to the simple object. And we're also going to implement the structuring assignment and the pattern matching. As you can see, the receive function received a pattern, right? It matches that it exactly should be receiving a record. And not just the record, but the record where the code property is 200. In this case, it can extract the length property and pass it further to the success function. And as in other pattern matching system, we can catch all, that is the final underscore, in which case we print unknown message. And in fact, this system is not new. Uh, as we said, there is an existing programming language called Erlang, uh, you can find it in this address, and it's exactly based on the concurrent processes which can send messages to each other. So in our transpiler, we'll build a very similar system, uh, but again, our goal is not to implement full Erlang semantics, uh, just to show how the transpiler works, how we need to implement extra library, etc. That is discuss and show core principles of the transpilers, uh, that is high-level compilation. But again, all the specifics of our language, that is the processes and messages and pattern matching, and we'll be discussing starting from the part two. In the first part, we'll be focusing on the transpiler itself, right? How to set up compilation pipeline and work with code generator, etc. So with this being said, let's jump to the implementation, right? Right away in today's lecture. So I'm creating the directory for our project, Eva MPP, again, message passing processes, right? Source, transpiler, and Eva MPP.js. So we represent the transpiler as the class, right? With the main API method, compile which accepts the program, and here's what should happen inside the compile. Now, first of all, we'll need to parse uh, the program into AST, right? We'll have a simple parser for S expressions. Once we have the AST, we have to generate the next AST, right? The JavaScript AST. And for this, we'll have the generic gen function, which accepts any expression and can return equivalent JavaScript AST node. At the very high level, it will be the program itself. And once we have the JavaScript AST, we need to call JavaScript code generator, right? Passing the AST, and obtain the target language. That's pretty much it. Uh, the final step, we need to write this target source code uh, into output file. Let's call it out.js, and this will be our compiled JS code. As the result, for our tests, let's return the AST itself and the target. And in today's lecture, let's handle only the numbers, right? The program itself will be the AST, and in the next lectures, we'll implement the parser, right? Let's define helper functions, save to file, which we'll implement later and our main function gen, which accepts the EVA AST and returns the JavaScript AST. Uh, today, as we said, we'll discuss only the numbers, right? So if we determine the expression is number, we have to return JavaScript AST node corresponding to the number. Now, each JavaScript AST node uh, will be represented as the object, which has the type. In this case, it's numeric literal and some extra properties associated with this type. In this case, the number node uh, has the only property, which is called value where we pass expression itself, so this will be our first AST node. And otherwise, we throw an expected expression. Okay, let's move forward and implement the code generator today. Right, very simple, so creating a source code gen, and we need the code generator for JavaScript. In the next lecture, we'll say how we can reuse existing tools for JavaScript, right, for code generation. But in this course, we're going to implement custom code generator just to see and understand how this works under the hood. 
uh, but again you'll be able to reuse any existing code generator for JavaScript if you compile to the right format of the AST. So our JS code gen is also presented as the class with the API method generate. Now it also has very similar method gen, uh, which already generates the source code from the AST nodes. And for each expression type in JavaScript, uh, we're going to have a function with the name of its type. So for the numeric literal, we have the numeric literal function, which returns the value property, that is the number itself. Now our gen function is generic, having the expression type, it can dynamically call and dispatch to the needed uh, handling procedure, that is to numeric literal in this case. And we also check if we don't handle this expression, we just throw an expected expression. Okay, so that should be it. Let's create tests and the main runner, run.js, right? Let's require our transpiler and I'm creating the instance, right? New Eva MPP and passing the 42 as the first expression, right? That is the single number. Uh, as the result, as we said, we return the compiled AST and the target source code. Let's print exactly this, compiled AST and also compiled code. Okay, let's do the first test. And we forgot to add, of course, is number function. Let's quickly add it, which is used just the underlying check for the type of in JavaScript. Right, the type of equals number should be good. Let's try again. And there we go. So congrats, we have the first compiler, the first expression type, that is the numbers. As you can see, the type in JavaScript is dynamic literal with the value 42 and the compiled code contains 42. Uh, as an assignment, go ahead and implement strings, right? We're going to implement strings in double quotes. Uh, and as you can see, it currently says unknown expression and we'll follow up with the strings in the next lecture. Okay, so this is the introduction lecture and what we'll be building. Again, in the first part of this course, we'll spend mainly in the source code transformation, mainly in the transpiler. Uh, and since part two will switch to the runtime that is implementing the scheduler and other constructs. That's it for today. Thanks and see you in the class.